In April 1986, the world witnessed the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in the former Soviet Ukraine. At the time, it was regarded as the worst nuclear disaster in history. Then, in March 2011, Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant exploded, after a massive earthquake created a huge devastation across much of Japan's eastern coastline. To date, both disasters are thought to be the worst ever. They were both ranked at a level of 7 by an international nuclear body. A 7 ranking is described as a major accident. There is no 8 ranking, 7 is the highest. Both disasters resulted in widespread panic, mass evacuations, and the fear of ongoing fatalities caused by radiation-related cancers. So which was worse? Was Fukushima as catastrophic as Chernobyl? If we measure a nuclear disaster's damage by the immediate number of lives lost, then Chernobyl was much worse. The numbers differ, though. International records claim 31 people died instantly, while the United Nations puts the number closer to 50. There were no immediate deaths recorded in Fukushima. The Japanese government later conceded that two workers had later died from radiation poisoning and injuries. However, more than 2,000 people died during or after the Fukushima evacuations, mainly due to old age or existing medical conditions. The number of people who contracted cancer or serious disabilities from Chernobyl and Fukushima is believed to be much higher than first thought. How authorities responded and the effectiveness of cleanups are telling. Given the Soviet government's tardy response, it can be assumed that Chernobyl was a far greater catastrophe. Governments are notoriously lacking in transparency when it comes to revealing exact details concerning disasters. This is even more the case if human error is thought to have caused or contributed to the incident. Whether the motives are to prevent public panic, save face, or both, we can only guess and rely on the opinions of experts in cases such as Chernobyl and Fukushima. The real cause of concern from both disasters is the ensuing death toll from nuclear fallout. Determining how many people died or will die after being exposed to radiation is the biggest worry. It's also very difficult to calculate. Medical records can help by providing data on people suffering from cancers and other ailments likely caused by nuclear disaster, however, it can be hard to actually prove. Cancers, birth defects, and respiratory diseases are all potential side effects for people who are in hazardous zones during nuclear disasters. Thyroid cancer is the most prevalent and deadly consequence of radiation poisoning. But nuclear authorities and governments are quick to claim such diseases occur all over the world and are unrelated. Thyroid cancer is caused when radioactive iodine is released into the atmosphere. People breathing in air contaminated with iodine run the risk of developing cell damage, which can lead to thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer can also lie dormant in people for years, as the symptoms aren't always apparent and can be confused with less serious conditions. This means that many people who have been affected by the Chernobyl or Fukushima disasters may have either failed to report it or may do so much later in life making it harder to link it to a nuclear incident. However, the evidence for Chernobyl at least seems damning. Not long after the 1986 catastrophe, hospitals and clinics in Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus reported a noticeable increase in people being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. This type of cancer also tends to be more common in women and children than in men. After the 2011 disaster, Fukushima medical records showed no significant signs of rising cancer cases. It should be pointed out that over 160,000 people were relocated following the disaster, mostly to other prefectures. If someone had unknowingly been exposed to lethal radiation in Fukushima, it could take years or even decades to be diagnosed, making it difficult to track the exact damage caused by the incident. The key to decreasing the danger of people developing nuclear-related cancers comes down to how efficiently authorities respond. This means how quickly and effectively the reactors were shut down and cleaned up preventing further radiation from being spread into the atmosphere. Another crucial factor is how successfully people who were in danger were evacuated safely and provided with the necessary medical support. In the case of Chernobyl, the response was a farce. Officials dithered around and shifted blame while civilians in nearby towns were still going about their daily business. Most people were aware that something had happened, but the dire lack of information and decisive action from the government meant that thousands were most likely affected in some way by radiation. While the Japanese government was certainly faster in taking action, the evacuation process was carried out with mixed success. Although everyone living in contaminated zones was quickly evacuated, the death toll soon rose because of people in hospitals and aged care facilities having to suddenly relocate. On April 26 of 1986, Chernobyl reactor technicians were carrying out a safety test. A fatal mix of inexperience, fatigue, and miscommunication led to some technical blunders, which ultimately caused a meltdown and subsequent explosion. Lethal clouds of radiation were sent spewing into the air and they were swept away by strong winds. People in the area were vaguely aware of an explosion, but they weren't notified by officials. It took hours before the news reached Moscow. 
The powers that be were completely caught off guard and clueless about what to do. After umming and awing for even longer, officials were finally sent out to oversee evacuations and cleanup procedures. None of the first firefighters to arrive on the scene were wearing appropriate protective gear. Many of them later died from radiation exposure. Pripyat was the nearest town with a population of 50,000. Although it lay just three kilometers away from Chernobyl's site, it wasn't until a full day after the disaster that Soviet troops began evacuating residents to safe zones. Prior to the evacuation, folks in Pripyat had been largely indifferent to the explosion. The only sign that something untoward had happened was when army trucks began hosing down the streets. The Soviet government waited a full three days after the Chernobyl disaster before announcing it to the world. This typified the overall bumbled handling of Chernobyl, from the shoddy reactor safety practices to the mishandling of the cleanup and the lack of accountability in general. In Japan, over 150,000 people were eventually evacuated from Fukushima. They made their way to designated safety zones either by car or in buses provided by the government. Japan has the oldest population in the world, and many of the evacuees were elderly invalids or living in aged care homes. Being suddenly shifted away meant that they lost access to vital medical facilities. The stress of the situation also played a major role, and it's estimated that about 2,200 people died due to the evacuations. The damage caused by the Chernobyl disaster wasn't restricted to the immediate area. Over the next few years, Chernobyl cost the Soviet economy an estimated $12 billion. The disaster is thought to have contributed to the ultimate fall of the Soviet Union. Such was the severe impact on the society, morale, and the economy. Even though the Fukushima disaster disrupted trade and production for several months in Japan, the economy soon recovered and business resumed as usual. The environmental damage from both disasters is, as you would imagine, considerable. Much of the land surrounding the sites is still uninhabitable. The areas near Chernobyl and Fukushima are considered nuclear exclusion zones, meaning that they're still contaminated and unfit to live in. Over 2,600 square kilometers around Chernobyl and about 370 square kilometers of Fukushima fit into this category. Of course, none of this takes into account the damage done to local ecosystems, which may never recover, at least some of them. As for which disaster took the biggest toll on human life? Well, Chernobyl was by far the most destructive. After decades of sifting through hospital records and medical certificates, the United Nations had estimated that the damage is far greater than initially thought. The UN's nuclear investigators examined the people who were most likely affected. This would be the reactor and cleanup workers, the medical staff, and civilians living up to hundreds of kilometers away from the disaster. They uncovered some chilling statistics. In 1988, 68% of these people were regarded as healthy, but in 2014, only 6% remained so. Most complained of cardiovascular or breathing conditions, and many others had developed cancers. By 2014, in Belarus alone, 40,000 people were registered as cancer patients. While it's not possible to say exactly how many of these are directly related to Chernobyl, an overall spike in cancers and other disabilities since the disaster is undeniable. Ukrainian radiation researchers calculated that a staggering 5 million people who have been affected by Chernobyl. In Japan, the number is likely to be far lower, although whether the actual number of cancer deaths increases amongst Fukushima residents remains to be seen. The stress of being involved in a nuclear disaster is believed to reduce life expectancy by around five years. The fear of being contaminated, the stress of evacuations, and the general ordeal led to depression, suicide, and chronic alcoholism. Both disasters shocked the world and led to global reassessment of current nuclear programs. Although Chernobyl was largely caused by faulty procedures, Fukushima was helpless in the face of Mother Nature, something that we can never prepare for. The destruction caused, loss of lives, the toll on societies have left many wondering about the safety of persisting with nuclear energy. Considering the immense damage caused by such disasters, it's not unreasonable to ask, is it really worth it?